Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm James and this is Rushmo 3D. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at the 3D printed parts for the IDEX 3D printer and we're going to also talk about the filament that I use to print those parts. 3D Jake Recycled Pet G. So let's get into it. Okay, so before we get into actually looking at the printed parts for the IDEX build, uh, let's talk about the filament that I've used to print them. So I reached out to 3D Jake UK um, and they were very kind in the fact that they sent me two of their RPETG spools. Um, so these are 1.75mm, 1 kilo spools. Um, they retail at £27.55 each uh, and it's available in eight different colours. Uh, it comes on cardboard spools, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, so as for shipping, so this is a, was a little bit confusing for me to start with, but 3D Jake UK is not actually in the UK, they're in Austria. Um, I think the UK part of it comes from the fact that this is a dedicated UK site where everything's displayed in in pounds uh, and everything talks about shipping to the UK. So there's no confusion with having to convert money or select shipping um, location, anything like that. So even though it came from Austria, shipping was super quick. Um, it was like two or three days, fully tracked. Um, shipping would be normally um, six pound for uh, an order below £42, um, but if your order is over £42, it's free. Um, and as I said, direct um, from Austria, shipped to me two or three days, so really quick. Um, so let's talk about the actual filament. Um, let's talk about the box. I love this box. Um, it, why? You might think, well, why have they done anything special with the box? It's just a box. They've made the effort to actually put some design and thought into the product they want to put out. And it's a premium product for a good price. And it just, the box sets it off, I think. So it's got um, a design all the way around it. Um, it's got a, a label that will tell you what you've got. Um, a suggestion for hot end and heated bed temperature, which I think is really cool. Um, displays that it's made in Europe, so we know we're getting some um, quality material. But yeah, so it's made in Europe and it's a really stylish box. You can even use the box after you finish with the actual filament. Um, give it to your children, let them colour the box in. You know, it, it, use it for storage. It's a little bit more um, well thought out than just a plain cardboard box. And what I also like, there's no holes in the box, so if you do store stuff in it, nothing's going to fall out. Um, so I thought that was a really clever thing to do to make something of the box. Um, let's talk about the cardboard spool. I really like the idea of master spool, it's something I would really love to see a lot of manufacturers use, but there are disadvantages to it. It's a little bit more involved if you want to change colours or materials over on your spool. You've got to have multiple printed or other ways of coming about them spools. So the next thing, next best thing I think, cardboard spools. Recyclable and yet strong. You might think a cardboard spool is not going to last very long, but actually, you know, these are about the, the size are about three mil thick. The core itself the the cardboard that goes into the core is five mil thick these are really solid um, spools so I think they're going to last plenty of time putting them in and out of the box or even if you're just going to put them in a bag um, I think they're going to last so I'm really happy that these are on cardboard spools it's definitely something to look into if you're thinking about getting into 3d printing See who's offering the cardboard spools. 
um, it just makes a little bit of difference in the long run. So there's only a couple of things that I don't like about the spool and they're really silly minor things and it's just my OCD. Where you, when you finish with the spool for the day and you put the filament away, you have two holes that you can poke the filament through. There's only two on each side. I would personally, when I made my master spools, is I had three sets of, uh, three pairs of holes on each side, so there was always somewhere to poke the filament through. Um, so you haven't got to waste a longer bit when you put a bend in it, but that's just minor. The only other thing, um, I don't tend to use, I have a lot of open spools, um, and I store the, the spool when it's not in use in a Ziploc bag. Um, the spool came with this little bag of desiccant, but no bag. Maybe it's something that manufacturers can look at. I know there's one manufacturer in the UK who also does cardboard spools, and they include a Ziploc bag. It's a minor thing, I have them, so I'm okay, but if you don't, It'd just be nice to have that in the box and you know that your filament's going to stay better for longer. So that's just me. Um, but overall, I'm really happy with the filament. It prints really well. Um, I printed it at 235 on the hot end and 80 on the bed. I was using my Wham Bam system. Stuck every time. Didn't have any failures due to that. Um, what, uh, the only thing I found was that going over about 245, so remember the, the range was 230 to 250, um, it felt as if the, the material was getting a little too hot and it was slightly changing colour as well, so I think it was getting pretty baked. So for me, 235 was the ideal um, area. Um, cooling. Again, this is all going to be down to slicer settings really, but I had, I think, maximum of 50% cooling fan throughout the print and parts came out really nicely and strong. So, we'll talk about the printed parts in a second. So, yeah, I've printed a whole spool of it, as you can see, um, and I'm about a third of the way through the next spool. Um, and I'm re it does really print quite nicely, so uh, it was a good choice, I think. Um, so yeah, let's now have a look at the printed parts, and we can then talk about the next steps for the IDEX printer. Okay, so we've had a look at the filament um, that we've printed the IDEX parts in, so let's have a look at the actual parts themselves. So, I'm not going to go through all of the parts, um, it's mostly reprinting some of the D-Bot parts. Um, but we'll, I'm just going to go through a few of the IDEX parts made or designed by Hunter, who I spoke about in the first episode, um, just some of the features I liked. So if we start with uh, the rear motor mounts, so basically it's going to sort of be positioned something a little bit like this on the printer. Um, and what I liked about these was the fact that um, where the motors attached so the motors will go in the top here and then the bottom so this is going to be the side that basically has our IDEX motor the uh, U motor um, and what I liked about these parts is that there's actually some adjustment in the um, the motor mount there we go you can see that so that will help when we come to um, tension our belts so I thought that was quite clever. Now these are actually version 1 parts. Um, Hunter has designed a second version. Um, I had already printed one of these and I thought oh, I'll just carry on with these ones for now. And we can think about uh, upgrading the parts much further down the line. So they're the rear motor mounts. And then with those you'll have the front um, pulley mounts. So basically here we have quite a big space for some pulleys and on both sides. Now one feature I did quite like about these is that Hunter has actually um, put end stop, physical end stop mounts on the front and back 
and each corner of the, the parts. So what we should be able to do is actually get the, the printer itself to ensure it's in line when it, when it comes to homing. So it will home to the back and then actually home the left and right side and we could also tell it to come and do it at the front as well. So I thought that was quite a clever idea. Now I'm assuming that's going to help a lot with also the IDEX alignment as well. I'm not entirely sure but I thought that was a really clever feature that he had put into those parts. So that's basically the back and the front and then um, the sides so which will carry our so these will ride along our y-axis and have our x-axis on uh, are actually in two parts that each side is in two parts and that's because we've got some brass inserts um, threaded brass inserts and they will position something like that um, and that's just so a bolt can go all the way through the part and then actually have something to thread into where we can't put uh, a nut on the end Hunter is allowed for those brass inserts, so I thought that was quite a clever idea. Um, so obviously we've got two, one for each side of these. Um, and then what I think is my favourite part of the, the whole system are the extruder mounts. So obviously we're going to have um, a zero and one, or left and right. Um, and what I liked about these so these will be where the belts actually attach, and there's a, another printed part to go on there. But the um, the actual extruder mount, Hunter uses different um, hot ends, different tools. So rather than having to change out the whole hot end and recalibrate the height and everything like that, he's basically made a magnetic uh, mount. So these are this has got three neodymium magnets in each part. Um, and if you just listen to this, they really do pull into place and they are quite strong. So I'm, I'm fairly confident they're going to do quite well in the system. And obviously we've got that on both sides. Um, and then this uses the Prusa Mark III extruder body. Um, so this will have Bontec gears in. Um, and basically we can have uh, an Octua fan or another 40 mil fan on the side to cool it and then we'll have our blower fan on the front so I thought that was a quite a clever way of um, using an already known well engineered design into his build so and what this actually will do this is um, slightly um, adjustable as well so we can actually move the whole hot end or the extrude assembly up and down to ensure that both are um, extruder 1 and 0 and 1 are actually level so I thought that was a very clever idea um, so yeah so they're basically the the main IDEX parts because I'm going to be using a lot of what I would say are D-Bot parts and I've got quite a lot of those printed now um, so I'm fairly sure now we're at the stage where I can actually disassemble the D-Bot um, it's going to be a bit of an emotional day for me because I'm really happy with this printer. Um, it's probably what it was my first sort of scratch built printer and it's done really well. But I think we're going to be just kicking up a notch with this IDEX printer. So yeah, I'm really happy about it. So the next video will be me disassembling the printer, talking about the parts we're keeping or the, the printed parts that I've reprinted but we're keeping um, and then we'll just talk about how the whole thing goes together now I know I've got to probably order some extra extrusions so we'll talk about that uh, and I'm unfortunately still waiting for the actual pulleys and Bontech gears themselves so we'll get as far as we can but yeah we can certainly move on now that we've printed a lot of the parts so that's coming up in the next couple of videos. Um, if you've got any questions about the printed parts or the filament as well, please put them down in the comments and I will get back to you. Um, but until next time, please consider liking the video, subscribing if you haven't, and keep on making. So I'll see you then.